Hey, everyone. This is uh, Kerry Collat, Matt Derlin on the podcast, The Way, presented by uh, Rudis. And and uh, we've been breaking down just, you know, some different coaching scenarios and, and things of that nature and, and um, enjoying the conversation and the feedback we've been getting from everyone. But Matt, how'd, you, how'd your week go, man? Good. It's good. Just getting ready to uh, gear up, head up to uh, NYC this weekend. This is kind of, a, you know, an interesting year, the way the, the freestyle schedule is formatted and the Olympic trials and the different formats that we we basically have kind of two seasons going on at once that we normally like they're split between the winter months and then the spring and summer months. But it's kind of interesting the the dynamics. I don't this doesn't affect you as much this year, right? I mean, you have outside of um No Hino is 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 Hino doing the Olympics or Yes. Yeah, yeah, but his process is, you know, is different. I, I think pretty much they kind of select their team over there, and and um, he was in the World Championships this year. He was in the World Championships uh, a year earlier, um, and I, he went to U twenty threes last year. It just made sense with uh, the training schedule and stuff. But yeah, um, highly likely that he's in in the twenty twenty games. Um, possibility, my my other heavyweight, the Mongolian um, Adgi, he could be, uh, on the Mongolian team. I'm not sure. Or, you know, maybe 2024, but, but their, their, their process is more se- selective, you know, just through the competitions and getting to know their coach and things of that nature. But yet now with the way we do things, it's, um, it's different. I, I know when I competed, it was always the same as the world team trials. And, you know, we, we had the Olympic year and it didn't really change, change our time frame at all. Now we're doing it differently. Yeah, but you guys, you know, specifically case in point back to where you guys are. You guys are in full swing now. You've been traveling the last couple weekends, got the first first yes. couple varsity competitions, you know, under your belt. And uh, I think that's kind of what what we want to transition into today is is a lot of times when, when you're thinking about wrestling, you just focus on the competition itself. And there's a lot of a, a lot of circumstances surrounding the competition that can actually have a direct effect on your, on your performance. And I don't think that's, I don't think we spend a lot of time in that, but you know, those things are, are critical and, and dialing in, you know, I think we're going to talk about specifically how you travel and how travel can affect your training and the little things um, that each athlete has to control and to dial into not only for himself, but, you know, to be ready to perform for his team. And I think that's, that's an area of, of, sport that we don't talk about a lot i think you know when we look at these international guys we see we see them traveling halfway across the world and so we hear about the acclimation of the senior level guys getting over to a tournament a week in advance you know getting adjusted to the time change um you know the geographic change all all those things but you know that that plays a plays a part in college wrestling as well that i I don't think a lot of people think about yeah, well, it, it is. It was an interesting question we had, and 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 I was just directly affected by it, and my my team was, and and um, you know, we just got back from a road trip. We we had Pittsburgh, and then we had Ohio, and and Pittsburgh is ranked, you know, eleventh in the country, and and um, you know, we're down there in the in in the twenties, and um, and uh, anybody listening, to this uh, hats off the pit. There's there's you know, they kicked our butts. That's part of the game. Um, and, and by no way do we make excuses for how we perform. I have to, as the, as the head coach, look at, okay, why did we not perform the way I think we should have performed? And, and, um, and there's a lot of things that, that came into it. And um, you're right, travel is part of it. When you talk about travel of senior level guys and acclimation, there's always been a guy who's been hit by, by travel. Um, but most times, Matt, honestly, like people ask me to travel affect, affect you care. No, it didn't. Cause I knew my schedule. I knew what I was going to eat. I knew how much weight I could lose. I knew how much weight I could drift. I knew how many, how many weight cuts I was going to have to have. I knew how much, clo- how much clothing to bring for the warm up and all that. I mean, you're talking about the best guys and they have this stuff, but not all those guys always have that. And I think as, as a head coach and as a staff, we made a mistake. Um, just assuming our guys knew that and we, we preach it. Like we do, we preach it. We tell them, okay, we're going to be traveling. This is what you got to be organized for. It doesn't mean you still don't have to do some follow up and follow up. And I think I let the ball drop on some follow up. And I and I'll give you one example: is uh, we split our trip up on the travel instead of doing eight hours in a van, we went four hours. You know, we we cut the trip up. Um, we worked out the next morning at a at a YMCA. Let the guys get some cardio in, lose some weight. We got to Pittsburgh that evening. Slept there that night. Um, checked weight on their scale, went to the room, did a roll around. And then the next day, 
um, at 11 o'clock, we needed to do that first weight cut to get down for the 1 a.m., 1 p.m. weigh-in. And one of the mistakes I saw was too much excitement. Um, I think the travel side we did right, but part of traveling is you're going to a new gym. It's a different place. People get excited. And I know my guys were excited to compete. And at 11 o'clock, I, I remember sitting there talking to my staff and I said, hey, we look too good right now. At 11 o'clock, <laughs> we shouldn't look this sharp. We shouldn't be moving this well. It's And when guys, when you could see it, the adrenaline, they wanted to compete. But <laughs> Pitt wanted to compete at 2 o'clock. You know, <laughs> we're competing at 11 o'clock. And that was part of it. I didn't back down the excitement uh, for these guys. And that was a mistake. And I said it and I saw it and I should have jumped in there. But I thought I, I'll be okay. And now I know next time I will jump in there and make sure things are set for them. And adrenaline is part of it, you know, and 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 that's one thing about travel that I saw just – and there's a few other things, but that's one thing. I'm, I don't know if you ever – had that happen to your guys or not, but it, it does no good being excited for a dual meet that's still three, four hours away. Yeah, I think there's there's so many things that you have to balance when it comes to travel and competition, especially with college guys that you know a lot of people don't think about. You know, for you know, there there's weight management. You know, normally if you're at home, you know, you've got the creature comforts of of being in your dorm or being in your apartment or your your house and having the, you know, have, having the creature comforts of being able to shoot over to the room and check your weight or understanding, you know, what your sleep pattern is probably going to be like in, in your own house. Um, and then how you warm up in your own room. All these things are are, are, yeah. are different. They're, they're similar, but they're different when you get on the road, especially as you're trying to dial in all these things at, at this month of November. And I think, you know, the month of November really is that trial and error period. Guys are figuring out like, okay, where, where does my weight need to be? during the week for me to be at my best come Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Um, where do I need to be the night before? Where, where do I need to be two hours before, like you were saying, before your pre-match warm-up? Yeah. Um, what, is my, what does my night's sleep need to look like on the road? How's it, how do I understand the, the differences that are going to be um, thrown my way between my house and my roommates and maybe my new roommate on the road being in a hotel? Um, how am I going to drift you know, what, what amount of weight do I drift at night yep. in the hotel, hotel as opposed to, you know, at home. Um, and then just balancing, like well, you, I'm glad you, you, you said, like balancing the, the emotion of a big time competition. You got a top 15 opponent, top 10 opponent. I know, you know, there's added layers to that because you have, a, you, you have guys from Pennsylvania on your team. So anytime you go back to your home state and you're wrestling one of the big time programs within your home state, there's even more anxiety, you know, and more emotion involved. And so there's, yeah. there's so many things that you have to factor in and consider, you know, why you're leading up to the competition, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, as I, as that, uh, as that dual meet unfolded for us, I saw it and I said, okay, we're, we're out of the race for the duel at this point. And, and now it's individuals. And so I started talking to my guys differently while we were on the bench, but you, you brought up one thing and, and I, uh, you, you said, you know, drifting and weight and, and, and we tell the guys all the time, Matt, be ready for the flat tire. You have to be mentally ready. Okay. Here's the itinerary and here's what we're going to do. But expect something to go wrong, right? And adjust and flow and, and not let it stress you out. I don't know how many travel trips I was on with guys and they would they would freak out because I'm like, it's part of it, man. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. And so the flat tire can happen at any time, whether it's in the van. For us, we had a flat tire. We had we brought our scale and, you know, we go to pit scale and we check it. And then we go back. Well, we had some our, our scale's been knocked out of calibration while we're traveling. So now it's flickering, my 25s, my 33. I'm like, I'm how much are you over? And they're like, well, coach, I'm either two and a half over or I'm four and a half over. I don't know. The scale's jumping up and down. And, and then the big guys are like, well, it's not jumping for me. So now we have this scale issue. And I said, okay, listen, you know, changing the itinerary. Instead of going up there, um, we're going up at, at 930. And we're going to go check on on pit scale to put their mind at ease. That's what I looked at. So now you're sitting in the locker room a little bit more. Now you're waiting until 11 to start your warm-up. And then, boom, they fired off. And I, I feel like our biggest um, our biggest thing that we we did not uh, follow through on as a staff and where, where I made the mistake was it was more. It wasn't so much the scale. That was another thing on top of travel. That was anxiety. That was stress. That adds to your ability to be up at, at 2 o'clock was 11 o'clock. They just moved too well at 11 and, and they were just antsy, just antsy. And I think it was antsy because we left on Thursday, you know, we, we, we split the trip up. So they're on the road. They were ready to wrestle 
But again, too soon. Scale was one of it. And like you said, I knew how much I was going to drift. I knew, you know, when I was competing, I have to be this when I fall asleep in order to make weight the next day. And I knew that, you know, I talked to Barry Davis a lot. Um, known Barry since, you know, since I was a young kid watching him. And I said when he was 11, I was watching him win a silver medal in the, uh, in the Olympic Games. And then, you know, years later, we kind of crossed paths and weight classes. And then Barry was retiring. And then through the coaching ranks, I've known him. And, and Barry's like best friends with my father-in-law. So he was at my wedding. And and so uh, uh, mutually, we've always had these connections. And, and so I, I bounced things off of him. And, you know, he, he texts me. He's like, well, how'd you feel? What was the issue? And I kind of said what I'm saying to you. These are the things that we mismanaged. And this is, you know, we should have performed better. Again, I'm not saying we wouldn't have beat Pitt. That would be a disservice to Pitt and its coaching staff. They won. They kicked our butts. You know what I mean? I think we would have performed better had I managed some things differently. And he said, well, he goes, don't forget, you were elite. Nobody had to manage, you know, you, Kerry, like you knew. And he's right. I, I, I have good guys on my team, but they still need some management in that. And that's just talking to them. And the next day we performed better against Ohio. And and we talked. Everything that we're talking about now was everything we talked about. Why are you getting so fired up? Why, you know, the goal for the first warm up to lose weight is to do as little as possible Get your joints loose, roll around, have fun. There should be no anticipation. There should be no sprints. There should be none of that unless you're jammed up on weight and you have to do a little bit more. That's the only th- that, that first one. And then the hard one comes after the weigh-in. Fire your lungs up, fire your legs up, get out there and compete. We perform better against Ohio. I still think we can perform even better after watching that duel. Um, you know, and then that duel allowed me to say, okay, this is the technical mistakes with the team during travel, you know, and, and, uh, but you need that, you need those road trips. People don't realize, you know, D one and, and I consider a road trip winning a duel on the road is almost like winning two dual meets. It's the same as when you drill a technique in practice, Matt, you remember you drill and you drill and you drill a hundred times. It never feels the same as or exciting as when you hit it in live competition, right? The payoffs there, the adrenaline's there. And that's kind of winning duels on the road. You got to be a team that can win duels on the road. Yeah. Without a doubt. in you know, what, what you're trying to do right now is dial in your process, right? And the biggest thing, you yeah. know, I'm sure you talk to your guys, like we've got to be very consistent, you know, very dialed in. It should almost be, it should almost be boring our road trips because you've dialed it in. So you know what the routine is. Okay. This is, this is how much sleep I need to get on the bus. You know, this is what I need to do when I get in the hotel. This is the time I need, you know, to eat, you know? And so, you have that consistent effort from, like you said, from Friday to Saturday, Saturday to Sunday, because ultimately that's that's what the NCAA tournament is. You have to be able to perform yeah. consistently at a high level over three days. So you have to be able to replicate that process, even though there's tweaks in between the days of the NCAA tournament, this, the stakes rise every single day, but your approach, you know, and how dialed in you are, you know, so it becomes an afterthought, right? Your your pre match, your autopilot. way in, yeah, your 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 travel schedule. It should just be autopilot, right? Like, okay, I know what to do. Yeah, I know what to expect, and so that's an afterthought. I don't have to worry about those things because I've got them dialed in. Now all I have to do is make sure my mind and body is ready at the right time. And this is the this is kind of the trial and error part of the year. Is is I you know, and I know we're in the next podcast where this is actually going to, you know flow right into this is just dialing things in in the month of November so you're prepared yeah. you know to climb to make that climb you know December through March yes. so and I mean the groove you yeah, need it I, I I think we need it we we didn't have our groove yet you know and and um like uh Sentais and I were talking I, I didn't need anybody to warm me up I knew exactly what I was going to do and I knew I how how intense the warm-up should be so I felt good when I competed and and I have I've got guys who have been in their their seniors. They know their warm up, right? And I think we we didn't gr- put them in a groove enough, you know. And and Cynthia said when they went to their uh, w- when he was competing, they, they did the same warm up, and he knew it was going to be five singles and five doubles and five spins and five turns on top. And he's like, "It's that's an autopilot thing." You know what I mean? And and um and I think right now where we're at in the season, we needed to set the groove on this first trip. This is what you're going to do. This we're going to be autopilot for them. And then as the season goes on, you can see where you can pull back the reins and say, okay, their autopilot is installed. They they're doing it without us over top of them. But I think early in the season, I should we should have been over top of them a little bit, especially in the management uh, of this travel. 
So moving forward, just to, to, to wrap this up, moving forward, what are the things that you feel that you have to dial in consistently throughout the year? Because I think there's, there's things that I used to pick up like, okay, I'm going to have to do this for my guys every single time. I don't think they're ready to carry this load on their own. But there's other things like I, I have to tell them what to do. But at a certain point, I have to feel confidence that I can just pass this off to them. You understand what the coaching staff is talking about. and You'll take ownership. And this is something that you can, you know, each one of your individual guys can just say, I, I got this coach. You don't have to worry about this. Eagerness. Don't be so eager hours and hours before you actually compete because you have to be able to uh, turn it off. I, I, you know, on the way back, we were talking to Van. I said, do you guys think I'm 24-7 wrestling? A couple of guys, I said, I'm not. When I get home and I shut the door, there's a point when I want to shut it off because then that's how I get back up for work the next day. I get excited for practice. It's like anything. Running practice all the time. You There's there's a, there's an anticipation to it, and you, you want to be excited every time you go in there. And maybe I have days, and I hate using percentages, but I'm just for this podcast using if I'm at 100, you know, I might be there coming into 80. Well, what happened? Did I not sleep well? Was I up all night watching video? Like you have to be hungry for it, you know, and in and, and, and a short amount of sp- – sprint time yeah i needed they needed to stay eager at 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 two o'clock and and not be so eager early in the day and and that's emotional and that's part of being becoming a better team is coach said turn it off turn it off you know that doesn't mean get on your phone but hang out with your teammates maybe play a board game play cards or something you know that's that's where it should have been no i think this is all great stuff really really good and i think this is hopefully we can uh, springboard this into the next week's podcast and and talk to a, you know another area of, of this evaluation period of the season yeah all right matt well good talking to you and those listening uh, again appreciate y'all tuning in and, and uh, if you got questions or anything just leave them at the bottom of the video and and matt i'll talk to you next week man take care carrie